the stories of mahabharata retold by shudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard krishna agree to serve as the pandav emissary to broker a peace deal with the kauravas vidu tried to discourage him but krishna wants no stones unturned to stop the war Krishna woke up early in the morning in Vidur's house. After completing his morning rituals and prayers, he mounted his chariot and arrived in the court of Dhritarashtra. Vidur and Satyaki held him by his hand and escorted him inside the great hall. Dhritarashtra stood up and greeted him. The men in the court hailed Krishna. The court musicians played welcome songs in his honor. A special golden seat was designated for Krishna. Krishna stood in front of the seat and bowed to the king and the other Kuru seniors. Great sages like Narada, Parashuram and many others adorned the court. Krishna bowed to them and then took his seat. Krishna looked at Dhritarashtra and said, O king, I am here today to pray for peace. It is my humble request that you prevent the impending war between the Kauravas and Pandavas and bring about peace in the family. The Kuru dynasty is the greatest dynasty in the world and it is up to you to ensure that its glory is untarnished. You know your son Duryodhan and his brothers with their arrogance and evil motives are bent upon destroying this family. But you can still stop this devastation and bring back pandavas under your guardianship think about it if the pandavas join the kauravas even indra on dared to challenge you and you'd be the undefeatable emperor of the world i pray you don't let go of this opportunity losing your sons or the pandavas in this bloody battle won't give you any peace of mind thousands of good men on both sides will perish unless you do something about it please listen to this message the pandav has asked me to deliver you they said o king dhritarashtra we obeyed your orders and spent 12 years of our life in exile followed by a year in hiding during this period we endured enormous pain and suffering but we didn't break our promise You are like our father. We pray to you, please keep your promise and give us back our share of the kingdom. We all have made mistakes and you as our guardian forgive us and bring us back on the path of truth. Krishna then looked around and addressed the assembled kings and ministers. My dear friends, do you think this request is unjustified? is yudhishthir's demand void of any merit he turned to dhritarashtra and said o king time and again yudhishthir has demonstrated his preference for peace he and his brothers have been ill treated several times by your sons their wife draupadi was humiliated in front of a court full of men still he always yielded to you to avoid any unpleasantness in the family The Pandavas are willing to serve you once again if you let them. Else, they have the might to win back what is rightfully theirs. It is up to you to decide their course of action. The men in the court kept silent. They liked what they heard, but didn't have the courage to speak up. Duryodhan, the Sarshan, and the other Kaurava brothers watched everybody with. threatening looks finally parashuram spoke 
It is foolish to fight an army that is led by Arjun and Krishna. They are the reincarnations of Nara and Narayana, and nobody can defeat them. <laughs> Duryodhan laughed. Rishi Kanwa said, Duryodhan, if you want to stay alive, don't try to fight the Pandavas. Krishna is Lord Vishnu himself. Surrender to him and give up your desire to fight. <laughs> Rishi Narada said, Arrogance and temper was the cause for Ayati to fall from the heavens. My advice to you, give up your arrogance and make truce with the Pandavas. Duryodhan ignored him. Dhritarashtra was listening to the comments from the Rishis. He said, Krishna, I agree to each and every word you say, but I am helpless. My evil son Duryodhan doesn't listen to me. Why don't you try to convince him? Duryodhan was sulking in his seat, looking away from Krishna. Krishna smiled and then, in a soft voice, he said, My dear Duryodhan, you are a learned man. You belong to a great family and you have a responsibility to uphold its glory. Most of your family members, your friends, your advisors, they all want truce with the Pandavas. It is your sacred duty to honor their wish. Remember, one who doesn't follow the advice of his well-wishers soon finds himself in deep trouble. All your life you have been cruel to the Pandavas, but they pardoned you. Don't consider it a weakness on their part. Trust me, even with the help of your mighty lieutenants, like Bhishma, Drona, Karna and others, you won't be able to defeat Arjun. Arjun humbled the gods in the Khandava forest, impressed Lord Shiva in a dual combat. Can any human being defeat him? Remember? How he thrashed you during your little adventure in Virat Kingdom? King Duryodhan, don't become the cause for the destruction of your family. People would curse you for that. History would never pardon you for your poor judgment. Make truce with the Pandavas and they will accept Dhritarashtra as their king and you as the crown prince. Give them their share of the kingdom and rule yours in peace. Duryodhan looked at Krishna with hatred glowing in his eyes. You are biased in favor of the Pandavas and blame me for no reason at all. My father, you, Vidur, Bhishma, Drona, you always find faults in me and not the Pandavas. I thought about all my actions you blame me for, even the tiniest one, but I couldn't find anything wrong with them. Yudhishthir is addicted to the game of dice and he agreed to play of his own will. And then Shakuni defeated him and won their kingdom, not me. Was that my fault? We obeyed our father's order and gave them back their kingdom, but they were foolish enough to play again and lose again and had to go on to exile. Why am I to blame for their stupidity? I don't understand. Why are you bent upon destroying us? Remember, we fear nobody and we bow to nobody. Forget the Pandavas. Even the gods can't beat Bhishma, Dron, and Karna. I'd prefer a glorious death in the battlefield than a humiliating surrender. Krishna, listen to me for one last time. Forget the kingdom. Without war, I won't give the Pandavas a speck of dirt you can lift on the tip of a needle. <laughs> Krishna laughed. Glorious or not, you will meet your death in the battlefield. You are a moron and that's why you don't see any faults in your actions. Be rest assured. Soon you'd fall and lose everything to the Pandavas. Duryodhan was fuming in rage. The Sashan came to him and said, Brother, 
Look at Bhishma and Drone. They're boiling in anger. I think they're hatching a plan. I won't be surprised if they capture us and hand us over to the Pandavas. I think we should leave. A startled Duryodhan jumped up from his seat and left the court with his followers. Bhishma sighed in disgust. A man who succumbs to anger and strays from the path of dharma becomes a loser and a laughing stock. Krishna wasn't amused. The Kuru elders are to blame for this. You have given a moron the powers of a king and then failed to control him. My uncle, the evil Kansa, took over his father Ugrasen's kingdom while he was still alive. The Yadavs, the Vrishnis and the Andhakas were terrified by Kansa's atrocities. I had to kill Kansa and restore Ugrasen to the throne to save my family and my tribe. I suggest you do the same. Capture Duryodhan and hand him over to the Pandavas. It is said, give up the evil member to save the family. Give up the family to save the village. Give up the village to save the country and give up the earth to save yourself. Dhritarashtra knew he had to do something. But he was out of options. He called Vidur and said, Go, bring Queen Gandhari. She might be able to control Duryodhan. Gandhari with her blindfold was escorted into the court. Tritrashtra briefed her of the situation. Gandhari said, You are the culprit. You have given the reins of your kingdom to an arrogant and undisciplined rogue. Now you have to suffer the consequences. Dhritarashtra asked Vidur to bring back Duryodhan to the court. Hearing Duryodhan's footsteps, Gandhari turned to face him. My son, listen to your father. Listen to Bhishma and Drone. To rule a kingdom requires wisdom and virtue. Evil men want to rule, but they can't keep it for long. It's not too late to change course. Join hands with the Vandavas and the world will be yours. Surrender to Krishna and he will guide both the parties in the right direction. War has no glory. War cannot bring peace. You have tortured the Pandavas for 13 years. Now let go of your jealousy and make amends. You are banking on Bhishma, Drona and Kripa to win the war for you. But if you think Bhishma, Drona and Kripa would give their best to fight against the Pandavas, you are a fool. They are loyal to the throne and they'd give their lives for you. But they could never treat Yudhishthir and his brothers as their enemy. Listen to me. Let go of your anger and greed. Make friends with the Pandavas. Gandhari's words, however, had no effect on Duryodhan. He left the court and huddled with his confidants to devise a plan. Duryodhan said, Krishna is the main problem. If we can neutralize him, we will win for sure. Krishna wants Bhishma and Drona to capture me and hand me over to the Pandavas as a prisoner. But I won't allow him the pleasure. Here is my plan. We go inside and with a sudden move we attack Krishna and tie him up in chains. Father won't like it. Bhishma might try to stop us but I don't care for any of them. Capture Krishna and we win the war. Satyaki overheard the conversations and he ran out to Kritabharma and said, Gather the soldiers and ask them to wait in a formation at the gate. He then ran into the court and announced, Duryodhan is about to attack Krishna and capture him. The fool doesn't know what he is getting into. Dhritarashtra panicked. Krishna consoled him and said, O king, if your sons want to capture me, please let them try. If I want... I can destroy them in an instant. That would resolve all problems. But I won't do such a thing, especially in front of you. Duryodhan has my permission. He can do whatever he wants. Just then, Duryodhan and his brothers burst into the hall with fierce weapons in their hand. The Sashan carried a long iron chain to tie Krishna. Duryodhan yelled, The Sashan! 
Wrap the chain around Krishna. Don't let go of him. Dhritarashtra cried out, What are you doing, my son? Have you gone crazy? Just like your hands can't hold the winds, your head can't hold the earth, Krishna cannot be held by any mortal being. Stop this idiocy right now! Duryodhan didn't care to listen to his father. He and his brothers surrounded Krishna like a pack of wolves ready to pounce on their prey. Krishna laughed and said, Duryodhan, you think you can catch me? If you think I am unarmed and helpless, you are wrong. Look at me. The Pandavas, the Vrishnis, the Andhakas and all my friends are with me. All of a sudden, Krishna seemed to grow double in size and from his forehead appeared Lord Brahma. Lord Shiva appeared from his chest and Agni, the god of fire, appeared from his mouth. Indra and the other gods along with the Gandharvas appeared from his limbs. The Pandava brothers, Krishna's brother Balaram, the Vrishni and the Andhakariyas appeared from nowhere. Krishna stood in the middle like a huge tower. He seemed to have thousands of eyes. Thousands of arms, thousands of legs. His terrifying stature scared the men in the court. The bright rays emanating from Krishna's body blinded them. They closed their eyes. Only Bhishma, Dron, Vidur, Sanjay and the Rishis watched the wonderful sight. The gods, the Gandharvas and the sages bowed to the Almighty and said, Lord, please have mercy on us. Control your fury and spare your creation from imminent destruction. The heartfelt appeals calmed Krishna and slowly he regained his original self. The deities who had appeared to protect Krishna also disappeared into thin air. The men in the court sighed in relief while Duryodhan and his brothers lay on the ground unconscious. Krishna held Vidur and Satyaki's hand and left the hall. As Krishna was about to mount his chariot, Dhritarashtra came to him and said, Krishna, you saw how little influence I have on my sons. You heard me how I tried to stop Duryodhan. Everybody knows I am for peace and how I keep trying to prevent the war. Krishna said, you all saw what happened today. You witnessed how Duryodhan tried to imprison me. And Dhritarashtra admits he has no control over his sons or his kingdom. I tried my best to bring peace, but I failed. Now let us all wait for the inevitable. Saying so, Krishna mounted his chariot and left the palace grounds to meet Kunti. The stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudip Tabamik. Audio engineering, original music and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharat Audio. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license.